So in this question, we're trying to determine the unknown mass of penguin number two. So this large-ish looking penguin right here. And this question is kind of interesting because it allows us to understand how to determine a system of analysis in the most efficient manner. So to give us an impression of what we mean by that, what we're going to do first is consider the system that would include all four of the penguins. And because we're including all four penguins, we would maybe want to make a redraw here. We're going to draw just a box to represent all four penguins. And if you look at the picture carefully, if all four penguins are our system, then the only tension being applied to that system is tension four, T4. So we will label that as the sole force acting horizontally on our system. And then since we are considering all four penguins together, the mass of our boxish object here would be the sum of the masses. So we can say that this mass is m1 plus m2 plus m3 plus m4. Now, this surface is frictionless, so there is no opposing friction going in this direction here. Once we have this free body diagram set up, of course we could apply Newton's second law. We know that Newton's second law would tell us that the sum of the forces acting in the x direction would equal the mass of our system multiplied by its acceleration. So again, the only force acting in this horizontal x direction is T4, and then for the mass we'll plug in the sum of the four masses. And then this is multiplied by the acceleration. Now at this stage, perhaps we can plug in some known values. We do have the value of tension 4 that was given to us as 222 newtons. And then we have m1, m3, and m4. So let's go ahead and plug those into the equation that we just developed at the bottom of the screen here. There we go. Again, we are looking for m2, so we've kind of highlighted that in an orange color. We could go ahead and simplify this. We could add the masses, the known masses, inside the parentheses. Now, at this stage of the problem, we have two unknowns. We have m2 as well as the acceleration. So when we have two unknowns in a physics problem, we're, of course, going to need a second equation. So let's go back to the original picture, and we're going to choose a different system. And that's, again, the beauty of this question, is it teaches us that we can choose a system strategically to make our problem solving the most efficient as possible. Now, in this case, we're going to choose a system that includes the penguins marked M3 and M4. You'll see why we're going to choose this system in just a moment. Let's go ahead and redraw that system in a more simplified manner, just like we did earlier when we chose all four penguins. Now, this system can be represented as a box again. And if you look carefully, we have two tensions this time acting on the system. We have T4 as well as T2. T4 is sort of tugging the system to the right, so we'll mark that accordingly. And then T2 would be t uh, pulling back on the system to the left. So this would be T2 right here. And then the mass of our object would just be M3 plus M4. So this is nice because we know the values of T4 as well as T2. And then, of course, we also know the values of M3 as well as M4. So we're going to set up a Newton's second law for this system, plug in the known values, and then we're going to be able to solve for the unknown mass M2. So here is that system. We're going to apply Newton's second law again. So the sum of the forces in the horizontal direction is equal to the mass times the acceleration. We have two forces this time. We have T4. We're going to call this the positive direction, and then this will be the negative direction. Since T2 points in the negative direction, we'll have a minus T2. And then this equals the sum of M3 and M4 multiplied by the acceleration. We'll go ahead and plug in the known values. There we go. We can simplify the left-hand side by subtracting those two forces. We get 111 newtons is equal to, and then we can add the, the masses together. We get 35 kilograms times the acceleration. Okay, so let's take this equation and kind of write it down in close proximity to the other equation we developed earlier. Okay, now for a very key insight. The acceleration in each equation is going to be identical. If you think about the fact that the penguins were all hooked together via a rope, they're all accelerating together. They're all accel accelerating as a single system at the same rate. So the acceleration in our first system has to be the same as the acceleration in our second system. So we're going to make sure that we understand that those acceleration values are identical. 
And then we're going to do a little algebraic trick here. We're going to take these two equations and we're going to divide them. Now, when you divide the left-hand side, you're going to get 2. On the right-hand side, you're going to divide this mass by that mass right there. So this is going to look a little funny. We're going to drop units for clarity at this point. But it's going to basically look like that. And then, here's what's neat. When we divide, the accelerations cancel. This acceleration divided by that acceleration would be equal to 1. So technically, we're multiplying this by 1, which doesn't change the value on the right side. So we don't even have to write down that one. And now we are in business, because we're going to be able to solve for m2 very nicely. Perhaps we can put the 2 on top of a 1, and then just cross multiply. So 2 times 35 would be 70. And then we cross multiply the other way, this way. You're multiplying 47 plus m2 times 1. So that doesn't change the quantity 47 plus m2. And look at this. Now all we need to do is subtract 47 from both sides of this equation. And when we do so, we should end up with a mass, what happened there, 47, of 23 kilograms. So the final answer here for M2 is going to be 23 kilograms. And that indeed is a great question because, again, it allows you to understand that you can choose your system in the most efficient manner to make your problem-solving steps as minimal as possible. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. If you're interested in making a small donation to my cause, I would greatly appreciate it, but please do not feel obligated to do so. Of course, I appreciate you taking the time to watch regardless.